This is everything I ate at Jalan Alor Food Street in Malaysia. Starting off, I ate a $6 spicy fried squid and this thing was massive. It was crispy, juicy and well seasoned. The crumbing reminds me of Hot Star. Then I got a $1 barbecue minced pork which was smoky, sweet and a tad spicy. It had a really nice bite to it. Next I went to this store where you can pick fresh seafood and have it cooked on the spot. This $25 grilled prawn was hands down the best prawn I've ever tasted. I mean look how juicy it is. It was cooked to perfection and had a delicious grilled garlic flavor. And of course the head was the best part. <laughs> I also tried a $5 deep fried octopus leg which I didn't enjoy as much because it was on the chewy side. Then I got a $5 pork rib which had a nice sweet and sticky sauce but it was a bit dry for my liking. For dessert I grabbed a $5 mango sticky rice which was absolutely delicious paired with the coconut milk. The sticky rice was soft and bouncy and the mango tasted fresh and sweet. And to end the night, I bought a $3 Thai milk tea, which was incredibly refreshing. This is everything I ate at Genting Sky Worlds in Malaysia. This theme park is literally 6,000 feet in the sky. I took a cable car up the mountain to get here. First up, I got a $10 hot dog and it was literally the biggest sausage I've ever eaten. It pretty much tastes like a standard hot dog, but loaded with minced chicken and cream on top. Next, I went to the Ice Age Park and grabbed a $3.60 chocolate filled churro. It was awesome watching them make it fresh. The churro was so crispy with a delicious hit of sweet sweetness from the chocolate oozing from the center. I also got a $2.60 hot chocolate and thought why not dip the churro into it. Turns out this was a messy but great idea. Moving on, I got the $4 corn in a cup which was topped with mayonnaise and lime. It tasted sweet, creamy, with a touch of sourness. It was a nice snack. I also got a $4.60 clam chowder which was rich and creamy but not something I'd rush to get again. Then it started raining so I legged it to get this $15 fish and chips. The chips were a letdown but oh my gosh, the fish was so crispy and juicy. It was delicious dipped into the tartar sauce. For dessert, I got a $3 chocolate and vanilla swell soft serve, which was light and smooth. And last but not least, I got a super refreshing $5 iced chocolate. This is everything I ate on a late night food run in Kuala Lumpur. I love how Malaysia is such a beautiful place where so many different cultures come together. I'm surprised how even past midnight I can find so much amazing food here. Starting off, I got a $6 crisp cheese knair fair which was piping hot and super crispy. The cheese was stretchy and chewy and it had the perfect amount of sweetness for me. I also got the $2.60 Turkish coffee. It was boiling hot and had a strong bitter sweet taste. Probably wasn't the the best idea to drink it so late at night though. <laughs> Next, I bought a $4 mixed shawarma, which is now my favorite late night food ever. I love how it comes with garlic sauce to dip and inside the fresh bread, it's packed with beef, chicken, tabbouleh and pickles. It tastes so delicious yet not too heavy. I love it. Last but not least, I grabbed a $3 Turkish ice cream, which was a challenge to get. It had a really cool stretchy consistency and was a lovely end to the night. And by the way, all of these foods are halal. I can't believe this is my first time trying Nazi Lemak and it's in Malaysia. I went to this place that serves it cafeteria style. You get a $1.70 plate of coconut rice, sambal, fried anchovies, cucumber and egg. And then you can pick your add-ons. So the meat ones were $1.70 each. I got ayam mera, which is a tomato chicken, ayam rendang and beef rendang. My plate was so loaded and it added up to $6.80. Oh, and if you pay 30 cents extra, you can sit in a room with air conditioning, which I did because it's super humid. And finally, time to dig in. Each bite is just so hearty paired with the fragrant rice and sweet sambal. My favorite part was the beef rendang. Oh my gosh, so delicious. This is everything I ate at Da Nang Night Market in Vietnam. First up, I got a $7 whole lobster. Can you believe how cheap it is? They freshly grilled it with one half topped with a creamy sauce and the other with scallion oil. It was so juicy and meaty and this amazing spicy and tangy sauce just took it to a whole nother level. I also got five prawns for three dollars. You know I love sucking the head. The prawn itself wasn't too special but dipped into that same sauce made it really tasty. After this I got some three dollar bun gun which are mini Vietnamese pancakes. These ones had quail eggs and prawns. It was super crispy and delicious with fish sauce. I love how you can eat it in one bite. Next I got a three dollar bon bò hue which had bouncy noodles and a delicious salty and beefy broth. It wasn't as hearty as other ones I've had 
but it's pretty damn good for one at a market. My go-to drink is a sugarcane juice and this 60 cent one was so refreshing and sweet. I didn't expect to find $2 tacos here. It had pulled pork, a crunchy slaw and tamarind barbecue sauce. This combo was delicious. Then I got a $2 nam nung, which was plump and juicy. I love the sweet and smoky flavor. I also grabbed some $5 op hung, which is one of my favorite types of sea snails to eat. It had a firm and slightly chewy texture and tastes great with chili sauce. Last but not least, I got a $1 mung bean chair, which had a really cool stretchy and gelatinous consistency. It was slippery to bite, but I enjoyed the sweet and coconutty flavor. This is everything I ate at Fall Wok Night Market in Vietnam. These were some of the biggest clams I've seen in my life. Have you seen anything like these before? First, I tried the most popular one for $70, which was freshly grilled and topped with fried garlic and spring onion. It had a really unique chewy texture, kind of like a crunchier abalone. I wouldn't get it again, to be honest, but it was nice to try. I also got these $13 snails, which you need to suck pretty hard to get out. I nearly choked on one. These were soft and had a nice salty flavor I liked. It. After this, I got a $1.60 ban chang nung, which is grilled rice paper. It's also known as Vietnamese pizza. It had a crunchy and chewy texture, and the inside was packed with pork floss and corn. To quench my thirst, I got a $1.30 coconut, which was one of the sweetest ones I've had. Next, I got this $2 chicken feet skewer, which was a little chewy, but it had a nice smoky flavor. And then I tried this $1.30 gel G, which is stretched sugar candy. So they pull the sugar mixture until it's almost like string. It's so cool. I quite like it. it was a nice sweet and coconutty snack. Next, I had a 60 cents bun bò tok nok, which is a palm sugar honeycomb cake. It was dense yet fluffy and had a subtle sweetness. I also got a $1 nem nung, which was sweet and smoky. It's always a great snack to have. Last but not least, I got a $2 strawberry Nutella rolled ice cream. It was surprisingly good. It was sweet and sour and it was a great end to the night. This is everything I ate at Gai Rung Floating Market in Vietnam. First up, I asked my driver to pull up to this boat and got a $2.80 bom tit nung, which is Vietnamese grilled pork with vermicelli noodles. It was so light and fresh with the pickled veggies and cucumber. And I loved the freshly grilled tit nung, which was sweet and smoky. Once you're done, you return the bowl back to the vendor and part ways. Bye! Next, I got a 60 cent su dao nan, which is soy milk. It was slightly sweet and super refreshing. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was surprised they even fry scrambled eggs on the boat. I got a $1.20 bun mi, which was like a breakfast bun mi filled with egg and pork. The pork was fatty and delicious, topped with soy sauce, and the baguette was crumbly and soft. It was so tasty. And last but not least, I climbed onto the roof of this pineapple boat and grabbed a 60 cent pineapple. I really enjoy dipping it into salt and chili. If you haven't tried it before, it's a punchy flavor combination that's sour, salty, and spicy. This is everything I ate at Gai Rung Floating Market in Vietnam Part 2. Starting off, I got a $2.50 bom reel, which is a Vietnamese noodle soup with a sour crab and tomato broth. Can you see how rocky the boat is? I love mixing in shrimp paste, which is kind of stinky in a good way. If you know, you know. I also got a $2.50 whole deal, which has chewy noodles, a sweet clear broth, and fatty pork pieces. This one was nothing to rave about, to be honest, but to be fair, it was made on a boat. Then I stopped by this really colorful noodle and candy spot and they even let me make my own bun gung lock for $2.20. So after making the sticky pandan sheet, we added a coconut and bean filling, rolled it up, cut it and sprinkled on some salt, peanuts and sesame on top. And voila! It tasted chewy, coconutty and slightly sweet. After this, I stopped by this gift shop which sold fans, hats and this $8 LV bag that says Michael Kors or Michael Ayors. They had ice cream here too so I tried this cute bear one which was not bad. And last but not least, least, I got a $1.50 coconut, which was refreshing, but not as sweet as I would have liked. Oh, and on my way back, I saw this petrol station for boats, which I thought was pretty cool.
everything I ate from Jollibee in Vietnam. First up, of course, I had to try the $2 chicken joint. The coating was really crispy and well seasoned and the chicken itself was so juicy. By the way, I asked for gravy, but it's not on the menu in Vietnam. Next, I got the $4 spaghetti and chicken joint meal with Pepsi. The spaghetti was simple yet yummy. It had a slightly sweet flavor to it. I think this meal was great value for money for $4. Next up, I got the $1.50 Jolly Hot Dog, which had a soft bun, but the taste was quite average in my opinion. And for something sweet, I got the $1 taro pie, which had a great crunchy pastry. I just wish there was slightly more filling inside. Last but not least, I got a 30 cents soft serve, which was smooth and refreshing. It kind of tastes like the Macca's one, but creamier. This is everything I ate at Maxwell Food Center in Singapore. I started off with an $8 roasted duck and char siu noodles, which was such a generous portion. The noodles were so saucy and delicious, and the char siu was tender and juicy. The duck was also tasty, but I just wish there were more meatier pieces. Then I grabbed a $2 iced tear sea, which is tea with evaporated milk and sugar. It was so addictive and had the perfect amount of sweetness. I'm obsessed with this drink. I also got a $1.50 Kaya butter toast because I saw so many people eating it. It's a sweet and simple snack and I can see why people love having this for breakfast. Next, I grabbed a $5 Michelin star chicken rice from Tian Tian, which was succulent and had a nice kick with the chili. It probably wasn't the best I've tried, but it was still yummy. After this, I grabbed a $2.50 coconut, which was massive. Unfortunately, it wasn't as cold and sweet as I would have liked, but that's okay. Then I got a $4.50 fishball noodle soup, which had a very soothing broth and lots of topping. The fishball was very soft and silky and I think this dish is quite good value for money. And usually I love chicken feet, but the $6 ones from this store had a very strong sour taste, which wasn't for me. Last but not least, I got a $2 sugar cane juice, which was such a sweet and refreshing end to the day. Okay, bye. Does anyone else have a love-hate relationship with crab? It's so much effort to eat, but it's so damn good. I went to Kang and Key Seafood in Singapore and got a $176 plate of Singapore chili mud crab with two crabs. The crab was so meaty and juicy and the sauce was mouthwatering. It was savory, sweet, and slightly spicy. I loved it. It goes perfectly with the $1.80 steamed bun, which was so soft and fluffy. You've got to mop up every last drop of that sauce. I also tried the $22.80 coffee pork ribs. The texture was crispy and sticky and the coffee flavor surprisingly worked really well. This is everything I ate at Marina Bay Sands Food Court in Singapore. Starting off, I grabbed these chicken wings for $2.50 each. They were golden and juicy. I just wish they had a bit more seasoning. Next, I grabbed a $7.50 wonton soup, which had a delicious broth, salty char siu pieces, and silky wontons. I'd happily scoff this down after a long shopping trip. Then I got a $9.70 beef pepper rice, and I have this really bad habit of eating food when it's still scorching hot. But yeah, you can't go wrong with this dish. It's so simple simple and tasty. I also tried the $25 Singapore fried hockey and me. I didn't love it because it was a bit watery for my taste and I thought the slipper lobster was quite small and dry. Then I got a $70 Singapore chili crab and while this was better than I expected for food court food, I'd still recommend saving your money to eat it elsewhere. Last but not least, I grabbed a $10 hazelnut and salted butter caramel gelato. The price was very steep but it had a beautiful soft texture and delicious flavor. This is everything I ate at Lao Passat in Singapore. The huge amount of smoke coming from this store instantly got my attention. I got the $28 set, which came with 10 chicken, 10 mutton beef, and 6 prawn sticks. I found the beef and chicken sticks quite chewy, but they had a sweet satay flavor, and I liked the peanut sauce it came with. The star of the show was definitely the prawn. You know I love sucking the head. It had a delicious smokiness to it and was incredibly juicy. I loved it. Next up, I got some satay sotong, which was were two dollars each. The squid was spicy and juicy. I mean, did you see it square? These were cooked really nicely. Then I grabbed a two dollar fifty iced Milo, which brought back childhood memories when I ate it from a spoon. It got me thinking, why did I stop drinking Milo in the first place? It's so yum. And for the first time ever, I tried an eighteen dollar barbecue stingray with sambal. The taste of the stingray reminds me of fish, but tougher and more dense. It's really bony as well. To be honest, it wasn't really for me, but I'm glad I got to try it. This is 
everything I ate at Chinatown Complex Food Center in Singapore. Can you believe these three plates cost me $11 all up? The $4 char seal and $4 roast duck rice was tender and delicious, but my favorite was the $3 roast pork rice. It was so fatty and succulent. Next up, I got the $4 cockles fried kuei tau mi, which was nice, but it didn't wow me. What did blow my mind though was this $5.50 Hainanese chicken rice. I got the thigh piece and it was so incredibly juicy and succulent. I love how it soaked up all of that soy sauce, which made every bite so mouthwatering. Then I got six shalong bao for $4.80. I like to poke a tiny hole, pour the soup into a spoon, sip it, dip it into soy sauce and vinegar and eat it in one bite. Make sure you don't drop it though. I was so sad. I swear the noodles in Singapore are just elite. These $3.50 wonton noodles were so saucy and had a great bite to it and the wontons just tasted so fresh. This is everything I ate at Central Market in Cambodia. First up, I grabbed an $8 grilled squid, which was really nicely cooked. It had a soft, chewy texture and was amazing dipped into this tangy and spicy sauce. It was so good. In between bites, I sipped on a $1 lemonade, which was super fizzy and ice cold. I also got a $3 chicken leg, which was perfectly golden and topped with a ginger and spring onion oil. It was so juicy and succulent and gosh, this sauce just took it to a whole nother level. Next, I got a $2.50 bomb reel which has a sour tomatoey soup and was filled with super soft minced crab and a bunch of other toppings too. It was nice but not amazing in my opinion but you get so much for $2.50. And then I grabbed a freshly blended $1 mango smoothie which was sweet and really refreshing in the heat. Go to part two. This is everything I ate at Central Market in Cambodia, part two. When I saw this $1 sugarcane juice, I just had to get it. It was so icy, sweet, and refreshing. It made me feel so revived in this heat. Next, I got a $2 fish porridge, which had chunky pieces of fish. The fried garlic really enhanced the flavor, and it was a really simple and hearty dish. Does anyone else agree the claw is the best part of a crab? I got this $10 plate of crab claws, which were nice dipped into this lemony and spicy sauce. I just wish they were meatier, though. I definitely recommend the $3 chicken leg and $8 squid over this. Then I got a $1 pink jelly dessert, which looked a bit better than it tasted. It had a sour flavor that I didn't personally love. And my goodness, the skewers from this store were freaking amazing. I think it deserves its own video. This was a day I'll never forget when I bumped into my followers who own a street food store in Cambodia. What's your name? <laughs> my name's Raynaud. So lovely. I bumped into her and she has um, an amazing street food store. Which one of the most popular once you said curry, curry. and namok mai. I'm so happy I'm selling like a street food. I have so okay. many like Cambodia food. Up there we top like coconut meal like that. I meet like my idol also. Oh. So I'm so happy. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. This is the red curry. This is actually so bomb. Amok Claire, which is fish. We want to leave the whole thing with you. Oh, we do. Why? You work so hard and your food is amazing. <laughs> oh, it's too much for me. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Cambodia. I got a team. I got a team. I demo. I demo. I'm so happy. Bye. Bye. So I just really made my entire day meeting them. I feel a little bit emotional to be honest. I never imagined I would like be one of my followers here in Cambodia <laughs> and the fact that they own like a street food store and I could give back and do something that that makes them happy just warms my heart so much. 
I can't say no to skewers and wow, these Cambodian beef skewers were so good. I got these freshly grilled minced beef and diced beef skewers for 50 cents each. And I love how they lightly grill a buttered baguette and give you fresh pickled veggies too. So apparently the best way to eat this is to put the skewers inside the baguette, squeeze out the sticks just like this, top it with the pickled veggies and enjoy. Oh my goodness, the crunchiness of the bread, the sweet and smoky flavor of the minced beef, and the freshness and crunch of the veggies just worked so well together. Adding some soy sauce elevated the flavor even more. And in hindsight, adding chili would make it even better. The diced beef skewer was also delicious. It had a more savory taste than the minced one and it had more of a bite to it. Everything just tasted so fresh. Who wants to try this too?